Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for joining us today on this Tuesday. Uh, this is Lunchtime with Lord, our daily devotion for today. And uh, we hope that your day is going well thus far. And uh, thank you for spending a few moments with us as we study the Word of God together and uh, just give you a thought from God's Word today, hopefully to be an encouragement to you and to help you with your walk with the Lord. Uh, I think we all understand the importance of God's Word in our life. Uh, God's Word describes itself several different ways. One, it is the milk uh, for the the uh, newborn baby in Christ. It's the meat, the strong meat for those that have matured in the Lord. It is it is our water. It is our bread. And so, so many other things the Word of God is for us. It provides nourishment uh, for us. It provides help. It provides guidance, of course, instruction, encouragement, uh, in these days that we're living, and uh, we need it for sure. And so today's verse that I want to call your attention to is found in the book of Psalms, Psalms chapter number 63, uh, the, uh, 63 and the very first verse. And uh, this is a psalm uh, that David was the human author of, and certainly David was used of God to write several uh, different psalms, so several different chapters in the book of Psalms. And so uh, chapter number 63 is one of those that is attributed to uh, David. Uh, he was a talented man. Uh, he was a man of war, a man of, uh, that uh, certainly served as king. We know, understand that. But he was also a musician. And here also he's a writer. He writes under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Uh, this particular psalm that we're going to uh, draw some, hopefully some encouragement for you uh, from verse number one. And so let's read it together today. Verse number one says, O God, thou art my God, early will I seek thee. My soul thirsteth for thee. My flesh longeth for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is. Very uh, familiar verse. Uh, we've uh, heard this verse certainly uh, many times throughout our life if we've been saved and been in church uh, for a number uh, of days, we've we've likely heard this verse. We've likely read this verse. Likely it was very familiar when we uh, read it together today. And so what are we going to look at from here? I want to just draw three three points or three things from that verse of Scripture about uh, the song, the psalmist David. Uh, his, his thoughts here, of course, was upon God. His thought life, his mind was fixed upon the Lord. And, uh, and there was a couple things I want to call your attention to. First of all, he talked about him being in a personal God to him. He said, oh God, thou art my God. There are people in this world that do not believe there is a God. Uh, we would consider them. They would even consider themselves perhaps to even be called uh, atheist. Uh, they don't believe that there is a God. And there are some that uh, uh, may believe there is a God. Uh, there is a God somewhere. There is uh, some form of uh, higher power uh, that is in charge of the things that's going on. Uh, but it's important not to just believe that there is a God, but that there's a personal relationship with the individual and God. And of course, we understand that that is only possible through the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said, no man cometh to the Father, but by me. Jesus Christ is the mediator between God and man. And, and so it's important not to just believe there is a God. The Bible teaches us and tells us that the devils believe, demons believe that there is a God. They, they believe and tremble that there is a God. And, and so it's important to have that personal relationship. The psalmist didn't just believe, David didn't just believe there was a God. He believed and understood that he was his God. He had a personal relationship with him. And so uh, it's very important that God, it, you have a personal relationship with him. And as I've already said, there's only one way to do that. It's through Jesus Christ. What he did on the cross of Calvary, uh, paying for our sins with the, his shedding of his blood, has made a way for mankind, sinful mankind, to be reconciled to a holy God uh, through the Lord Jesus Christ and through Christ alone. And so the psalmist, first of all, is his mind's fixed upon God. He said, he's my Lord, he's my God. And this, so there's a personal aspect of that. The second thing that I want to call your attention to from verse number one is this. Notice he said, early will I seek thee. Early will I seek thee. Here we see the psalmist's pursuit of God, David's pursuit of God. And uh, we understand David was not a perfect man. Uh, in fact, the Word of God records his great fall with Bathsheba, with adultery, then arranging uh, Bathsheba's husband, Uriah, 
to be placed upon the front lines of the battle, the heatest, the hardest uh, part of the battle, the hottest part of the battle, and uh, he was killed to to cover up the uh, affair that he had with Bathsheba. So we understand he's not, he was not uh, perfect. But the Bible calls him a man after God's own heart, a man after God's own heart. And that, um, here we see this man that's a man after God's own heart was seeking the Lord, his pursuit of God. He said, I'll seek him early. Now, there's two aspects of that that I want to just draw your uh, your attention to is, for first of all, seeking him early certainly would mean uh, you know, they didn't wait to the end of the day to see what time he had left over to spend with God. He sought him early in the day, sought him uh, early uh, after getting up. And certainly that's an encouragement us, for us uh, to do as well, which God shouldn't just get our leftovers at the end of the day. You'll find that there won't be anything left over for him when we do that in our lives. And you also find that your life, your day will go better. Uh, your walk with the Lord will be stronger. Your your uh, your mind will be be able to fix upon him through the day, fix, be fixed upon him through the day if we start out early in the day uh, seeking him in devotion and the word of God in prayer and so forth. But there's another aspect of that seeking him early, not just the time frame of that day, but also shows, him, shows that he sought the Lord earnestly. He sought the Lord earnestly. And, uh, and we, he didn't lay around and wait. And, and as I've said, he earnestly sought the Lord early in the day. So he, you see, he was a personal God to him. There was pr the pursuit of God there early. And then notice this, uh, the passion for God. He said, my soul thirsteth for thee. My soul thirsteth for thee. He said, not only will he early will I seek thee, but he said, my soul thirsteth for thee. And uh, it goes on to talk about uh, the dry and thirsty land where no water is. And here you see his passion uh, for, his passion for God, his desire for God. Uh, and it, that desire would cause a person like you and I, a believer in Christ, a follower of Christ, a Christian, uh, to want to spend time with him, uh, to, to read the word of God, to pray, uh, to live for him, to serve him, and all those things. He had a great thirst for God. And then he said, it was so, you see the greatness of his thirst by how he de describes it. He says, my flesh longeth for, for thee. And he said, it's like uh, uh, being a, in a dry and thirsty land where no water is. And certainly we, spiritually speaking, that's the land, of course, that we live in. There's nothing in this world. We live in a dry land spiritually uh, where no water is. Uh, the things of this world, this philosophy, the philosophies of this world will not quench the thirst. Uh, it, it only causes more thirst for the believer. And so, but God is the one that can satisfy the thirst of the soul. And so just three uh, quick points uh, from this verse of Scripture. His, he was a personal God. There was passion for God, and there was a pursuit of God. And so let us uh, be like the psalmist. Let us uh, be uh, looking for God, seeking for God, thirsting for God. And if you if he's not your God, let's let's if he's not your Lord, if he's not your Savior, won't you get saved today? It all starts with that personal relationship with God, a personal relationship. But it's only available through Jesus Christ, His Son, who paid it all for us on the cross of Calvary. Hey, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your Tuesday today. And uh, Lord willing, we'll be back tomorrow on Wednesday's edition of Lunchtime with the Lord. If you could like and share our video, comment, let us know who's watching. And uh, we'll see you tomorrow, Lord willing, on Wednesday's edition. God bless you. Have a great rest of your Tuesday.